Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. But say we're on baby watch here. Deuce quit or buddy will quit being a butthead there. <coughs> She's really starting to bag down. <coughs> <coughs> it's kind of quiet out here right now, except for me hacking and carrying on. Yeah. How much longer you got, well done? I know, he needs to go somewhere, doesn't he? Find his own pad. Quit jacking with you. Yep. Anyway. Well, I got two of the girls up there and the rest of these guys just out moseying around. Ruby. Ruby's not too far off. <coughs> I'm thinking. Man, it's cough. Alright, so I just want to come out here and have a look around. Because I know we're getting close with... Uh, Miss well done. Uh, let me see. Man, there's been a lot of stuff that's uh, popped up on my radar, so to speak, the last few days, couple of days. Uh, there for a while, they're wild. There for a wall. Yep. But there for a while, I wasn't getting any kind of information about anything. And of course, I really wasn't looking either. But uh, but lately, there's been a lot. Uh, I watched a video. It was an interview Glenn Beck had with, I believe the lady's name was Whitney Webb. That was just, wow, if half of what was talked about is true, the world's a mess. <laughs> the world's a mess already, but man, uh, it's, like I said, it's quite interesting. Uh, and, you know, she's got a book out. Of course, she's promoting that book, I'd say. But it, anyway, just, man, go find it. It's on YouTube. Uh, it's Glenn Beck's pod, podcast. Man, I can't talk today. Uh, anyway, it's on his podcast. And, uh, man, some of the stuff is crazy. talks a lot about Epstein and the connections that he had and uh, the connections between the government and organized crime just crazy <clears throat> uh would explain a lot of what was going on with Epstein for sure. This uh, Maxwell woman that they got in prison now that was supposed to be his recruiter of underage girls. Uh, her father was involved in some kind of intelligence gathering government agency uh, I think it was with Germany and just there's just a lot there to uh, process I mean and it talked about a lot of the other people what 
You know, it's just crazy. They talked about the, uh, and I can't remember what the term is, but uh, I found something interesting. Uh, there's a large, I don't know what you'd call it, it's, it's a loose organization. Uh, that there's many organizations involved in it. I want to say the humanist, but I don't think that's quite right. But uh, what these people believe is that only a small percent of people actually deserve to, to live well <clears throat> and you know just they, they just think that there's two groups of people and before I started this video I should have went and refreshed my memory on all of this but uh and this goes back to the to the Rockefellers and uh, you know even H.G. Wells the authors involved in this stuff talked about it and H.G. Uh, Wells once said that there will only be at some point there will only be two types of people the ones who are the elite and this is not a direct quote here We'll get the truck a little warmer. Uh, the two types of people, those who will live well and deserve to live well, basically the elites, and uh, those who will eat bugs. And I'm like, what? Wait, what did he say? <laughs> Just, you know, I know that this is, anyway, I know that uh, our old buddy, uh, Bill Gates and Elon Musk, both have invested in uh, bug farming. Makes you wonder, huh? Two of the richest men in the world. And I saw some other information, too. Oh, Bill Gates bought or heavily invested in a wastewater company. And uh, so did some U.S. senator. Can't remember the name, which is probably all right. And... Uh, about the time they're investigating in it, or not investigating, but investing, uh, the government passed some laws making the uh, wastewater regulations stricter, and this caused the uh, stock of this company to go up. So evidently they were prepared for this, and <clears throat> I'm assuming here that Bill Gates and the senator uh, had some influence on that vote. Oh no, take that for what you will. You can go investigate it. Uh, <clears throat> <clears throat> Excuse me, my sinuses are draining like crazy all of a sudden. So, us normal, regular people are in trouble. I mean, really. I, you know, you, you've you heard it for years. And uh, it just, you know, keeps getting worse and worse. No matter. 
Now, I don't want to be all doom and gloom and, oh, it's over, no use trying, because, you know, that's no way to be. Uh, there's ways we can get around all this, you know. And And I just learned, it was probably early this year, late last year, about parallel economy. And I, I've never learned the term, okay? That's what I learned. And I've known about parallel economy for a long time. I just didn't know that's what it was. Uh, you know, it's working under the table, you know, doing jobs for cash. Uh, barter. You know, trading work for goods. So, I, that's one of those things. And that's, you're going to see more and more of that. Of course, you know, there's also, as this stuff goes on, and the shortages increase, which looks like they're going to, whether it be diesel fuel, heating oil, jet fuel, uh, whatever, macaroni and cheese, fish sticks, you know, <clears throat> you're going to see the crime rate go up. You're already seeing it if you're, if you're just kind of paying attention like I am. I'm just kind of paying attention to the crime. But I'm, I'm seeing on Facebook, it seems like in this area, hey, look out for this vehicle. It was it was uh, stolen from my house. And, and then there's, you know, the ones that, hey, watch out for these people. They're doing this. And it's just more and more every day. And, you know, most of it is because the people want to do that. They, they would rather steal than work. It's, it's easier in their mind, and they make better money, they think. But, you know, myself, I prefer having the peace of mind that uh, somebody's not going to come and throw me in jail because, you know, I stole a bunch of catalytic converters. Plus, I'm too fat to get under them cars anyway. Uh, so... You know, it's what I say and what I repeat a lot. Is to pay attention to what's going on out there. Pay attention to what's going on around you. Be situational aware. Situational awareness is a good thing. I was just on a, this is somewhat different topic. Uh, was on a uh, Facebook page. I think it was Pastured Pigs for Beginners. And somebody was asking questions about keeping boars and, you know, the safety and, you know, this and that. And so I commented, you know, you can't, any large animal, even smaller animals, you know, you've got to be uh, situationally aware. you got to realize what's going on. I mean, you take a hog like old Deuce out there, you know, our big oldest breeding boar. You know, he's over 700 pounds. <clears throat> And we've learned not to walk up beside him from behind. If you're going to approach him, approach him from the front so he can see you and knows who you are. Because you come up from behind, he's got them big old floppy ears. He can't see what's coming up here. And a pig's eyes are more towards the front anyway. They're interesting. But uh, and me and Ethan both have experienced this where we would walk up beside him. And uh, he hears the noise or feels the presence, whatever, and he'll jerk his head real quick. And, you know, he's got tusks. They're, they're about like that now. There, yeah. From See my thumb sticking out? They're about like that. And he cuts you with one of them, especially when he swings that big old head. If you ever looked right the pig's neck on the back of it is just a great big old solid muscle there. Because, you know, they use their head to lift stuff, their nose. And that's the same thing with everything in life. you got to be situationally aware. I'm going to stop right about here. i got to clear up some space.
Okay. That didn't take long, did it? So, you know, situational awareness is one is important. I don't care whether you're what's going on. Uh, and that's, you know, a lot of people get irritated with me that, you know, like running to the kids. Because when I'm watching TV, I don't have it up very loud. One, I can hear it just fine as long as everybody's quiet. <laughs> but, you know. And I want to hear if a car pulls up here in the driveway. You know. That's so why. And on the reverse side of that very same coin, I leave a TV on when I first go to sleep. Set a sleep timer. In. It's because it, I get there, I get laid down. And <clears throat> one, it helps my mind to, you know, I focus on the TV and uh, usually it's gun smoke. And my mind can focus on that enough to relax and, you know. But also, it kind of drowns the outside noise out. I mean, it's... I still hear some of it, but it's not... I lay down, and it's quiet. At least little noise, I'm jumping up. What's going on? What's going on out there? You know, so... But that timer goes off, and, you know, then I can hear all right. But I just like to be aware of what's going on around me. And I guess that's one of the reasons why I'm not a big crowd person anymore. Because there's just too much going on. I have focus issues when I get in a crowd because I'm trying to hear and see everything that's going on. And uh, I don't hear so good anyway, so I'm not focusing on the person I'm talking to. Because of everything else going on, I can't hear them because there's somebody over here that I can hear better but anyway you know whether you, it's that situation or you're driving down the road just like the other day that video I put out that truck we're going down the road so it's a straight stretch of highway for like three four miles or more he's been following us for a little while a couple of miles anyway there's three of us in the line there's a pickup behind us me and Rhonda and then there's a car in front of us. There was four, but the front car turned off, and that slowed us all down, bunched us up a little bit, and we're but we're past that a little ways. And there's an oncoming car. I mean, I see it, and I can tell by the way the truck behind me acted that he could see it, the pickup truck. But this truck starts around us. The pickup behind me backs off, flashes his lights to signal to the truck driver, hey, you can get back over. But he doesn't get over. He comes on up beside me, and I, at this point, I'm knowing that he can't, there's not enough room <laughs> there. So I get off the gas, and I'm over on the shoulder of the road. But that semi-driver drove, ran, the oncoming car off on the shoulder and the car that was in front of me on the shoulder. You know, it, and if... Uh, if all of us in the cars hadn't been paying attention, that could have been a horrible mess out there for no reason. This guy's in a hurry, not paying attention or something. I don't know what his problem was, but the point is, be aware of what's going on around you. Uh, <laughs> not everybody is and you know Rhonda's had some fairly recent you know year or two ago experiences that she's gotten more situational aware especially when she goes into town and stuff uh, but you just got to be aware of what's going on you know one of those situations I hope she, she watches this so I hope she don't get mad at me but she just was over here in Pittsburgh, a little small city here in Kansas, or not here in Kansas, I'm in Missouri, but it's only eight miles from me, and we go there a lot. But she's at a Casey's convenience store, you know, and her and Ethan was in there, and uh, 
she comes out and there's somebody standing right beside the driver's door of her car. They're not saying anything, but they're looking at her. And so, you know, she may or may not have a hmm, serious way to protect herself in her purse. Something that's loud, you know, when you use it. <laughs> uh, uh, one of them cordless hole punches. Uh, anyway, so she, she's seeing what's going on. She reaches into her purse, and that's when they decide they need to move. You know, and they never said anything. They never said, excuse me, sorry, nothing. Just you know, went on their way. So you've got to be aware. I mean, <laughs> it's not at the forefront, but there's still a lot of human trafficking going on. I mean, right now it seems in this area, it's, it's teenagers that are coming up missing. Uh, now, fortunately, I'm seeing that, I'm going to guess about half of them are found, you know. But where's the other half? And this area has, has a history, especially down around, well, no, it's, yeah, it, it's pretty widespread of women coming up missing. You know, there's several unsolved murders down around Joplin, you know, from 20, 30 years ago. Anyway, <laughs> I'm getting a little off track here. Just be aware. Just be aware. That's your best tool, you know, no matter what. Like, you know, I told that lady about the pigs. We go out there. Ethan, he gets out in the field with them, messes with them every day. I'm in there quite a bit. Just get in there, you know, give them a scratch behind the ear. Or, you know, let them know that you're not an enemy. You're not a predator. Of course, I don't want to deal with the predator that thinks it's bad enough to take on a 700-pound bull or hog. Uh, <laughs> no. Uh, or a you know, a 600-pound sow with babies. That's the scary one right there. At least for me, you know, they scare me more than old Big Deuce does. You know, because there's a lot of facts. First of all, their mother. And especially when them babies are little. You know, that first week, let's say, is when they're the most protective or protective and, uh, you know, they're tired. <laughs> Just, you know, and their natural instinct is protect their young. I just, you know, wouldn't want to tangle with a, a sow that's just had baby pigs. I, you know, I can't think of a predator that would. Now, if they could, you know, swoop in and get one, I'm sure they would, but... You know, most of your predators are pretty smart. They're going to uh, make sure that mom isn't paying attention. Try to get it off by itself. Anyway, be situational aware. Uh, yeah, parallel economy. Uh, I think you're going to see a lot more of that. Because like I said, when I was growing up, my dad, you know, he worked a lot of construction, which meant a lot of downtime in the winter. Uh, and there was, you know, he, at one time he was friends with a, a farmer. Uh, he'd go help him. The guy would give us a half a beef or something. Uh, or, you know, of course he came and helped dad too. But, he actually gave us a cow that we ended up using as a milk cow for years. You're going to see a lot more of that, I think. And I, I think that's what we need. Just cut the government out as much as we can. These, these laws that they that are on the books are bad enough. Some of them are... And I'm not anti-laws. I'm not all about anarchy at all. You know, I, we need laws. Because they're just some people that are bad people. And uh, there's people out there that 
would be bad people who wasn't for laws. So we need laws. But some of this stuff, you know, just like our, you're probably tired of hearing about it, but the USDA and their meat inspections, they require every state to have the same, the exact same inspection standards as they do. But if you cross the line, just, you know, like me, my processor is eight miles away from me, the one I'm using, but it's in Kansas. So I can't sell meat that they processed in the state of Missouri because of that imaginary line runs through there. <coughs> you know, which we are going to be checking into a different processor. Uh, it's new. It's not as close as this one which is a con, but they hope to be USDA inspected March next year. So, we'll be checking that out. We'll update you when we make a decision what to do there. Uh, yeah. Just, you know, laws are crazy. Uh, they talk. We we hear every day about a truck driver shortage. Well, they just they just made law in February of this year, federal law. It might be state. I don't know, but I'm sure it was federally influenced. But you have to go to a truck driving school to get your CDL now. Is that not? I mean. I believe in the testing because it's like the laws, you know, we need certain laws. But if you can go past the test without the school, why do you need to pay, you know, $4,000 to, to go to school? I don't know. Okay, well, uh, I don't know what time it is right now. It's afternoon. I gotta go drive school bus this afternoon. It's yippee. No, I don't mind driving it. I kind of get a kick out of them kids. <clears throat> they're, they're so funny. Yeah. This one little boy. I'm gonna call him Joe. That's not his name, but he's got a Anyway, let's just call him Joe. Uh, there's not a Joe that rides my bus, but we'll call this one Joe. It's twice now I've drove the bus. I tend to drive the same bus, so. Anyway, it's twice he said, Bus driver, will you wake me up if I go to sleep? <laughs> Anytime he asks, he doesn't go to sleep. He's gone to sleep before, but not when he's asked. That cracks me up. <laughs> so, anyway, we got that going on this afternoon. And as I showed early on in this video, we're on Baby Pig Watch. Um, as well done is getting pretty close. Now, keep trying to look at my watch. I don't have it on. So, oh, be on the lookout for baby pig videos. I know a lot of you would prefer those to these. Uh, so, there's that. Uh, there was, it just seems like there was a whole lot more I wanted to talk about. And I just can't think of it right now. So, if I think of anything, I'll probably there'll probably be more. I don't know why I'm pointing. It's it'll be <laughs> there might be more later, but if not, well, so look out for each other. Let's help each other when we can. 
and let's pray because um, there's lots of prayers needed uh, yeah just kind of keep an eye out for these things you know that are that are uh, out there go look up that deal with uh, Bill Gates and the uh, wastewater treatment go look it up Bill Gates and uh, Elon Musk they're not investing together I don't think they're buddies but uh, they are investing in the same thing of course, Bill Gates is the largest private landowner in the country. Yeah. And it just crossed my mind what I wanted to talk to you about. I watched another Glenn Beck video where he's talking about Chinese secret police stations in several different countries around the world, including the United States. And what they're doing, and I'm sure they've they've uh, already got ideas who they're going to look at anyway. But they're monitoring social media and seeing how people talk about China, and then they're going to these people and telling them they need to stop. So, yeah, there's that. Look it up. Don't take my word for it. Don't take my word for anything. Uh, except for what my name is. I, I got that one down. So, that being said, we'll catch you all later.